welcome to Rusty Brain Dump. As you can see, I've taken one of the motors out of the CNC machine. Uh, and if you haven't, don't know what I'm talking about, go see my previous videos about my new uh, Bridgeport CNC mill. I've taken one of the motors out. This is the X axis motor. And uh, I've been reading over the spec sheet. I, don't, I could not find a data sheet on this motor. I did find a spec sheet that had some information. Uh, it didn't tell me the pin, pin outs or, or anything like that, but I was able to deduce those using um, the original tests on the original drives in conjunction with, uh, my, with my voltmeter. And I've discovered that uh, this pin here, the one at the bottom, is the ground. The two pins on the left here are the armature plus and minus, and the two pins on the right are the tachometer. There's a separate coil in this motor that gives feedback in an uh, in, in analog voltage uh, based on speed. Additionally, I was able to find the spec sheet for, or the data sheet for the encoder. Uh, and though there's, what, 10 pins on this encoder, I only need four of them. I've got the plus five volts, the ground, and I've got the uh, channel A and channel B. Those are the ones I need. The rest are, um, this one has, this encoder has an index and it has the, uh, the inverse of the index channel A, channel B. But I don't need any of that for what I'm doing because as you may be able to see over here, I have decided that the way I'm gonna drive these is with a drive called the Gecko Drive. Now, when I was doing my research, I, uh, it, I, maybe I'll hook this up while I'm talking to, to you about it and then tell you how I hooked it all up. Um, as I was doing my research, at first I was thinking, well, I can't figure out how to use the original drivers. So another obvious choice that's very common in the CNC world is to um, use stepper drivers, right? Stepper motors, I mean. And I very, very, was very close to going that route but I, but, and I almost bought a stepper motor and a stepper driver uh, to test and play with. But um, at the last second I said, you know what? I would much rather use the original motors. Let's see what I can find as far as, see if I can get them to work first. Um, so I did a research on what motor drivers to use. In a lot of the forums that I was looking at, um, I found that they were mostly saying that when people did uh, conversions on this particular machine, that they used a drive made by Granite. Uh, I don't remember the exact uh, type of drive it was, but it was made by Granite. And, um, and so I went to look for that drive, the driver, and um, it's out of, it's out of, uh, they don't make it anymore. Um, and so I looked for its replacement and unfortunately the replacement it called the Argon or something like that. I don't remember exactly what it's called. That may not be exactly right, but it's something, it's like $400 per drive. <clears throat> and so, uh, there was, yeah, I just wasn't going to do that. I was, that's just way out of my budget. Um, it would be a waste of, I should, I'll just sell the machine if it's going to cost me that much for each motor, to run each motor. So, um, so then I, then I started looking at the Gecko drive. Now, the drawbacks of the Gecko drive is that the maximum voltage on it is 80 volts, but I got to thinking about it. And even if eventually I have to find something that more powerful than that, um, I am fairly certain that an 80 volt drive, driver is going to be plenty powerful. It, besides, it can handle up to 20 amps. Um, this motor is a 150 volt motor at 14.6 amps, it says on here. Um, and, but it was only being driven at 100 volts in the original, from the original drivers. So 80 volts is not much less than that. Now, the, the other challenge that I had is finding a power supply. 
that would put out 80 volts. I, I, had a very, I didn't really find one, but I did find a, a fairly inexpensive one uh, on Amazon that does 70 volts at seven amps, um, which I think is gonna be okay, it's gonna be fine. Uh, again, it's another one of those things that once I get it up and running and uh, going well, if I find I need to upgrade those, then later on I can do that. So, so I've now got this motor hooked up and ready to test. I uh, did some of this testing already, so it's ob obviously since I know how to hook it up so already. Um, in addition, um, the Gecko driver put out five volts for the encoder, but, but it only puts out, I think it's 50 milliamps. This encoder can take up to 200 milliamps, so I've got it hooked I've got that hooked up to a, a separate power supply. It's a five volt power supply. Um, I've got Linux CNC running over here. Um, and so I'm going to uh, get that up and running. I'll be right back. Here's a little bit closer look at the Gecko drive. Um, the first two lines here are the uh, power ground and the 70 volt DC. We have the armature plus and minus, which are the one, these black and white ones that are going over to the motor. We have the encoder uh, lines. The orange one here is the uh, error. Uh, when, I, when I touch it to the five volts, that enables the drive. Basically, it's a, it's enables the drive. If I hit ground, it'll fault the drive, so I can start it and stop it that way. Uh, and then, of course, there's channel A, channel B, which are going to the encoder. And then the step direction uh, are coming from the computer, uh, which is, I, I found uh, this nice little parallel port um, connector. It has a terminal inside. The terminal's inside, I can wire it up so I can hook up all of the drives to that. Uh, it, I might eventually get some breakout boards to do that for me to give me more I.O. But for now, uh, that works nicely for my testing. Uh, the, here's the drive. And, th and then what we have, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this, but you can see Linux CNC. I've, I'm gonna use step conf, step config to start with because it gives me a way to uh, just test the motor a little bit. So uh, I'll bring that up. I'll remount my camera here and I'll show you the drive running. Okay, so I put a piece of tape on here because you, it'd probably make it easier for you to see it moving. And uh, I'm just gonna, like I said, I'm using step config. Um, and I just set it to, uh, to a velocity of half an inch per second at, and an acceleration of 15 inches per second squared. And, and I'm gonna hit the run button here. And let oh, I me mean, change the travel to about 3.3 inches. And um, I got to enable the drive. There we go. So as you can see, it's going back and forth um, just fine. So that tells me I've got the armature correct. I've got the uh, encoder correct because it, it would not uh, have control if the encoder wasn't being read. Gecko drive would not allow it to go. So you can see it's working, working fine. Now, I will stop that. I will bring up uh, this growling at me. I'll bring up Linux CNC and just, uh, just to show you that I can also run it from within the software itself. So the jog speed is set to 5.8 inches per minute right now, so it's moving nice and slowly. I can kick that up. Let's kick it up to about twice that. And uh, let's see if it's moving. So that tells me that I'm making progress. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is uh, get this on the machine and make sure it'll actually move a big heavy uh, chunk of metal around see if it has enough torque to do that now, there's another thing i do want to mention in this video and that is that there are um, tuning 
features on this drive. For a servo drive, uh, you, you have to tune your motors. It uses a PID controller, which stands for um, Proportional Integral uh, Derivative Controller. And uh, I'm not gonna go into the details of what that is right here, but uh, I'm, I did a little bit of tuning already just to make sure it would run on the, on the uh, bench. But once it's on the machine, I'm gonna have to do more tuning. I'm hoping to show you that when the time comes to. And uh, for that, I'll try to get my uh, oscilloscope hooked up so we can see it on the screen.